The practice started in a kind of living room of a small apartment in a residential suburb of London and is now somewhat larger. The many iterations of that practice, I think the ideals have been quite constant. A belief in design that can change the quality of our lives and that that can be done with an ecological, sustainable dimension. So I think that that idealism has been a, a sustaining force behind everything that we've done and everything that we see here in this exhibition. As an architect, you're immersed in what you're doing at the time. So perhaps an exhibition like this gives you kind of pause to reflect because any project is a response to its site, the heritage of the site, and in a way a reminder that our environment is a continuum. And it's a mixture of different periods, styles, materials, and that gives a certain richness. We can look at the British Museum here, and we've really taken a slice through the existing, the great library, and the court with this almost like an artificial sky hovering, enclosing the space. It's quite interesting to trace the history of the model in terms of the history of architecture. And the model in architecture just goes back to the beginning of civilization. And I can remember a time when with the digital revolution and the way in which computer-driven renderings would convey an extraordinary sense of realism. And there were thoughts about, is this the end of the physical model as we know it? The reality is that as that side of computer-driven intelligence has grown, the whole model-making side has grown at the same pace. There is no substitute for a model. When you actually get down and you see it, it's physically tangible. When you have an exhibition like this, you see a sketchbook, it's opened, you see a sketch, you see photographs, but it's a little bit like the tip of an iceberg. What you don't see below the surface are all the hours, the exchanges. You don't see the explorations into a design direction which captivated everybody and then became a cul-de-sac and you retrace your steps. And so in these models, as you look at each one, they all tell a, a story. They look like different designs, but finally it morphs into the final design as built. It's a process which involves so many parties. So to find an accord on any project which you see here means that it has to integrate a lot of diverse opinions and views. And perhaps when it looks inevitable, maybe it's like a poem, but it's more difficult to write a poem than it is to write an essay. Each project is special in its own way, but perhaps the one project which touches so many different dimensions, sustainability, symbolic of a nation, bonding with history, and then the Reichstag does in a way tick more boxes than so many of the other projects. That's not in any way to necessarily single it out, but that was also a project in the public domain. It was the very essence of democracy. That I think perhaps only happens so rarely, once in a lifetime. When we look at the cupola here and we see the spiral route which takes you to the observation deck and places the public symbolically above the politicians, gives you a vista of the city, connects you with the horizon. In a way, it looks so straightforward. What you don't see is the process. You don't see all the many cul-de-sacs and they seem perhaps like dead ends. But when you look at this, you see the elements which finally come together in the design as built. And that's true of not just the Reichstag, it's true probably of every design which has been built. 
But I think that Hearst is different. It's different in the sense that when I come here, I really feel I'm coming home. It is a home away from home. And that's a very special privilege to have your place of work in a place that together with the leaders of Hearst, you've helped to create this building. It's a unique combination of a historic shell, the ambition of the founder, Randolph Hearst, that this would be part of a larger area, a quarter of the city, as it were, that was devoted to communication, to culture. And that has evolved over time to establish an identity on the skyline that combined with integrating works by artists, I think is a, a very unique blend of challenges, aspirations, ambitions. And the idea of creating one community for Hearst from many diverse locations and to bring the kind of social hub in this shell, I think there was so much goodwill from all the city bodies and indeed Hearst itself to encourage that. So, in that sense, I can't think of any project which is really so rich in its diversity and ambitions. And you think of the horrors of 9-11 and coming to talk about this project. And strangely, that meeting taking place on the day, despite everything that was happening. And then the groundbreaking which was really a tremendous vote of confidence and courage, of optimism. And coming back here and seeing it, it just makes you stop, really, perhaps, and think. I think that architecture is always going to be about pushing the boundaries. It's always going to be about the human good. And in that sense, it's creative. But in the end, it's very much about the person-to-person -person relationship. It is about the future of humankind. So in that sense, I think it's enduring into the future.